everyone. I am so excited to be here today. Up until I was 10 years old, I insisted that my mom would leave my window open at night. Now, I grew up in Denmark where it gets very cold during winter, so it was pretty ridiculous. But I wanted the window to stay open because I believed in Peter Pan. Yes. And I wanted him to come and take me to Never Neverland, a place where if you believe hard enough, you can even fly. So let me show you how I made my project fly by believing and never giving up. When I was 16, I invented a chemical compound with the aim to prevent against skin cancer caused by the solar UV radiation. Right after high school, my friend Emily and I founded a company, and during the next two years, we managed to achieve our proof of principle. We filed two worldwide patent applications, we raised venture capital, and later we established our product development in Japan. We even had an offer to sell our company for more than what most people earn during a lifetime. But before talking more about this, I want you to understand the problem we are trying to solve. Despite the fact that the sun is more than 150 million kilometers away, humans strongly feel its effect. That's both the positive and the negative. Now, most of us know the feeling of getting sunburned. It really hurts. What happens is that the UV radiation penetrates deeply into the skin and releases energy. And that absorbed energy is what is causing the sunburns, skin cancer, and in worst scenarios, death. To prevent the entire planet from getting a sunburn, the ozone layer protects Earth against most of the UV radiation. If the ozone layer had been perfect, almost no harmful UV radiation would reach Earth. But it's not. And this, together with the lack of sufficient protection against the UV radiation, is causing severe damage to humans and materials all over the world. And this is where our compound comes in. So actually, we started our project because we had a wish that we wanted to cure skin cancer. But realizing that this is fairly complex, our aim and driving force became to find a solution that could prevent it from being developed in the first place. So we started investigating different sunscreeners, and after a while, we could conclude that these do not protect sufficiently enough, and they cannot be optimized. So as a result, we wanted to come up with a completely new concept for sun protection. There just had to be a better way. So the inspiration behind our final solution is the ozone layer. We knew that the ozone layer is getting thinner and thinner, and some places on Earth, there's even holes in the ozone layer. So our thought was, why not take what's missing up there down to Earth and create a personal ozone layer. Now, this is ozone. It's a small molecule which consists of three oxygen atoms. It has outstanding UV-absorbing properties, which is what we want to take advantage of. But ozone down here, it has two difficulties. One, that it is toxic and it is a gas. So we, need to, we needed to solve that first. And to do this, we had to come up with some kind of container molecule in which we could encapsulate the ozone so that it would stay in a carrier material and so that it wouldn't be in direct contact with the skin. And this is when we came up with the idea to use this unique molecule in 2010, it was nominated the most beautiful molecule in the world. <laughs> so let me introduce to you 
the famous Buckyball. <laughs> the discovery of this molecule is about the same age as I am. But it was so significant that it actually won the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1996. So as you can see, it is a round and spatial molecule, and it consists of 60 carbon atoms, which are represented by these black dots. But why is this so interesting? It's interesting because this unique structure makes it possible to chemically open it and encapsulate different molecules inside. The buckyball is extremely inert, and it has its own UV-absorbing properties, which made it an ideal container for the ozone molecule. So, our final solution effectively combines these two natural UV-absorbing agents. And together, this combination, which is the first in the world, is expected to provide a 99.99% protection against all UV radiation, and it does it continuously. Now, to give you an idea of the size, you can place one million of these nanoscaled molecules on the tip of a needle, so they are very, very small. In 2010, we achieved our proof of principle in cooperation with Yale University, and later, we decided to move our product development to Japan, where we've been working with one of the leading chemical groups in our field. So our final product is a powder, which can be added into sun lotion. But since UV radiation does not only affect humans, but almost everything it touches, it can also be added into plastics, paints, coating on cars, and other materials where blocking the UV radiation is necessary. Our technology is protected through two worldwide patent applications, which covers the compound, the production method, and the use of the compound in 14 different application areas. So today, I don't sleep with my window open anymore, and I don't believe in Peter Pan. But I do believe that if you're afraid of taking risks, if you're afraid of failing, afraid of stepping outside of your comfort zone, you will be left on the ground. While believing, thinking positive, daring will let you fly. So with that mindset, I want to tell you about some of the experiences and lessons learned I've had building my company and growing up. As young entrepreneurs, there are three big things which we are missing. And that is experience, a professional network, and capital. Three things which are all essential in order for a company to succeed. So when we started our project, we obviously didn't have any experience. And the first time I presented our project in public was because we were encouraged to participate in this local high school science competition. Both Emily and I were mega nerds, ah, mega nerds. So we took this challenge very seriously. And so we would work day and night to write our report we read tons of scientific articles to understand the professional field we were working with. We even wrote the initial patent application describing uh, all the technical details. At the regional finals, we presented our idea, and it was spot on. I mean, we made the best presentation, and we were able to answer all the jury's questions. But to everyone's surprise, we did not win which, of course, is a right as it is. That's life, you can't win every time. But we wanted to know how we could improve. So, we went to the jury to ask them. And this is when they told us that they hadn't even considered our project for the competition because they did not believe that we had come up with our own idea and written our own report. 
They told us to focus on our high school curriculum instead of thinking. <laughs> instead of thinking that we could change the world. So we cried. <laughs> All the way back home on the bus. Not because we didn't win, but because we'd been treated extremely unfair and that really hurts. So this experience completely took away our belief that what we were spending all our time on was worth something. And we were very close on just abandoning our dream. But we moved on, and luckily we also got smarter. We learned that working hard does not always equal success. And that even though you fail the first time, you might succeed the second time and it might be even bigger. Because six months later, we won the Intel Challenge for having the best business idea with the biggest potential in Western Europe. So we learned. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we learned, don't give up. And don't fear failing. Failing is just experience, and experience is learning. Now to our second missing component was our lack of professional connections. When building a professional network, there's really two ways you can go about it. You can either start bottoms up, which is less risky, but it is slow and it's ineffective, or you can start from the top. I'm not really that patient. So I choose to start from the top. The top of the top. But who should I call? I thought that one of the Nobel Prize winners of the Buckyball might be a good pick. <laughs> so I picked up the phone, and every day after school, I would be sitting in the principal's office calling him. And he never picked up. So actually, I became quite good friends with his secretary, and sometimes we would sit and small talk for quite some time, exchanging weather information and stuff like that. So not all my time was wasted. But one day, two months down the line, he picked up. And I was so surprised, I could barely speak, which is kind of rare for me. So I told him about our idea, and he put us in connection with some of the leading experts in our field. Top experts are experts just like you and me. People just like you and me. And my experience is that they do want to help. You just have to ask for it. So when building a professional network, don't go for B people. Don't even go for A. Go for A+, plus because they have the keys to open the doors to the right network, which can potentially change everything. But as we later learned, not all people are there to help. So at the end of our second year high school exams, we experienced our first big media rush. And with all the media attention came all the inquiries. And we were soon approached by three gentlemen who were very interested in cooperating so we started negotiating. The only advice we had on our side was our high school teacher. We had no money to get a lawyer, so we signed the contract thinking it was harmless. This later proved to be one of our biggest mistakes. Eventually, it did get resolved, but it took a lot of time, effort, and money. So we learned the lesson. One of the issues with being a young entrepreneur is that you've come from a safe environment where the only adults you've been in contact with are your parents, teachers, and in general, just adults who are all on your side. So, naturally, your idea of adults is that they are very trustworthy. <laughs> but let's be honest. Let's be honest, <laughs> not all of them are. That is one of the things that we had to learn the hard way. Now, we need a strong give-it-back culture 
It is extremely crucial that those who've had success or defeat are willing to sit down and share their experiences with those still striving for it. And we did, luckily, meet people who were willing to help, who got up from behind their desks and made a difference. And to those, I just really want to say thank you. Now, to our third missing component was our lack of capital. And I guess in discussions with entrepreneurs, the lack of capital is an endless topic. So some entrepreneurs might be trying to convey their idea, but they find it is rejected, while some other average idea is accepted. I think the difference is in the way in which you communicate your value and get that message across. There is tons of capital out there, and the investors will invest when they see a project with potential. We found that you need to make them fall in love with your team and with your idea. We managed to raise venture capital from private investors and different funds. It wasn't easy, but it is possible. So, in the, during the years of building my company, I have been walking on a very fine line between success and failure. And believing is one of the things that made me move forward. The fear of failure never really existed in my mind. I guess that's the beauty of being young. You just don't know any better. <laughs> As we grow up, knowledge, experience, education, it limits us. You want to be realistic, you don't want to waste time, and you really develop this critical sense towards things that are outside what you're used to. Now, while we all get older, we don't have to give up the beauty of being young. Once in a while, we should all go back to Never Never Land, the place where there is no fear of failing, there's no limitations, where the crazy ideas live, and where dreams get realized. And we don't even need Peter Pan to go there. So those of you who are still hoping, you can't shut the window, because it is all in your mindset. And with that mindset, that is when you're really able to make things fly. So thank you for flying with me, and thank you for your careful attention. Thank you. Thank you.